watching Scene TV. I'm Maya McNulty, your host, Schenectady Cable Entertainment News and Events. And next on our show, I'd like to welcome Josh Cup. He's the owner and general manager of the Thirsty Owl here in Saratoga. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Maya. Yeah, it's great to have you. Great so to tell be us here. the story about the Thirsty Owl. Well, the Thirsty Owl. The Thirsty Owl uh, came about in 2001. My father uh, purchased uh, almost 150 acres on the western shore of Cayuga Lake in Ovid, New York, from Bob and Mary Plain, who had a vineyard that was. Uh, dated back all the way to 1973 uh, when they planted some chancellor and some Riesling vines. And uh, so that was 2001, the summer of 2001, we purchased the property. And then the following year in 2002 is when we started producing wine ourselves. Hey, tell us about the beauty of Cayuga Lake. Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, so all, all the Finger Lakes were, were formed, you know, more or less 20,000 years ago. Um, the last glacial retreat um, during the Ice Age, and it carved out these very, very deep lakes. Um, Cayuga Lake itself is about 450 feet deep, mm -hmm. so that produces a nice little microclimate that keeps uh, the, the surrounding areas a little warmer during the winter time and a little cooler during the summertime. So that's what makes it such a great uh, environment to grow grapes in. And then Seneca Lake, our neighbor to the west, uh, that's as much as 600, 650 feet deep. In fact, they did some submarine testing during World War II in Seneca Lake, so yeah. Yeah, so does the beauty of the Finger Lakes have any inspirations in your lines? Uh, I would like to think yes. It is very, very pretty. In fact, when you drive into the actual winery out there in Ovid, New York, we have a little sign there that says, uh, you know, welcome to a thirsty owl moment. And uh, it's, it's a very beautiful scene. A lot of folks have come in and talked to us over the years. I mean, we've, we've only been up and running about 12 years now, but a lot of folks have been proposed to on that one little stretch of the, the road that's leading into the winery. So. It's Beautiful. Very pretty. Yes, I've been there and it is gorgeous. Well, recently you opened an outlet store in Saratoga on the corner of Lincoln and Broadway. Tell us about that location. Yeah, we started, uh, we opened up shop on March 15th of this year and have been doing very well. Uh, it was a nice little soft opening, didn't do a whole lot of advertising at all, and um, we've been very pleasantly surprised with the results. Um, yeah, it's just we picked Saratoga Springs. We felt like it was a nice cross section of folks from the Northeast. You know, obviously during track season, but um, Saratoga Springs is, is kind of a year-round town now with the convention center doing such good work. And um, yeah, it's a nice little cross-section of, of, of a nice demographic from all over the Northeast. So tell us about the experience that a wine goer can experience over at Thirsty Owl um, down in Saratoga. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, they're kind of a little bit different, the experience, because you're not, you know, you're not right at the, the winery at the vineyard, but it's great. We, we try to... Um, try to kind of uh, mirror the environment and the atmosphere that you get out at the lake. It's, it's kind of a little bit more on the fun and informal side. I know a lot of wine tasting rooms can be a little bit formal and we try to have a little bit more fun and that's, that's kind of the motto at both Thirsty Owl West in Ovid and Thirsty <laughs> Owl East in Saratoga Springs. Tell us about the wine tasting. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, wine tasting is great. You know, when I'm actually just doing that and, and uh, not paying invoices and doing all those other businessy stuff, I don't really feel like I'm working. It's such an interactive experience, any wine mm -hmm. tasting is. And uh, it's great to talk about the wine or talk about the day that someone had at the track, you know, where they hit the uh, trifecta box or where they had a tough day. So cool. it's a really <laughs> great chance to be interactive and interact with the folks that come through. Tell us, um, do you feel that everyone is a personal um, expert on their own tasting when they come into the pairing? at your place? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, you get all different types. You get folks that aren't really that into wine and just looks like a fun place to stop. Um, and you get folks that have their own wine cellars and the questions you get are so different. You know, some days people will come in and ask if they can taste the Riesling, which obviously they're pronouncing it incorrectly. And <laughs> I just, I don't even have a giggle. I just, you know, I realize that people's wine IQ can be anywhere from 60 to 160. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it's fun that way because, you know, some folks want to learn all there is to know about the wine. And some people just would rather speak with whoever you know, you know they've, they've come to the shop with on their side of the bar. So mm -hmm. sussing out who is who is always a yeah. fun Do you have challenge. classes that educate wine goers? We will. In fact, we've talked about doing some fun classes, uh, like a Wine 101 class, um, and also doing some nice pairing dinners um, as the restaurant opens here very, very shortly. Yeah, tell us about the uh, vision for the restaurant. Yeah, the restaurant, um, it's been a long time coming, but we'll be open very soon. And I think by the time we, uh, we uh, hit TV with this episode, I think we should be up and running certainly by then. 
Um, and we're going kind of small plates, tapas, and uh, you know a few entrees here and there. But we'll be doing lunch and dinner. So nice. yeah, we'll, what are some tips for pairing with the wines? Yeah, tips. You know, I think a lot of times in in, in the wine industry, people want to really know that you know something's very concrete and set in stone. But you know, you know, you're typically you know your dry whites. You're kind of going uh, you know your dry whites. You're going seafood and pastas and maybe chicken. And then you know, as you get a, a heartier meal, when you get into your steaks or meats, you kind of want to sneak over to the red side. That's a very easy rule of thumb but it typically comes down to whatever your palate accepts yeah. if you want a bit of a novice with wine sure, sure. so um help me with selecting a wine and how i would pair it like would i look at the weight the intensity the color how how would i know that um a particular wine a riesling would go with uh chicken or seafood or how would i know that great question we're off to a good start okay so <laughs> so pairing just as simple as um you know what what you enjoy i mean it, it's it's kind of we go residual sugar on our tasting sheet so how dry or sweet the wine is um, our tasting sheet is very simple. It just kind of starts top left with dry whites down to sweeter wines in the bottom left, and then our reds are hanging out over on the right side. So I think what you really need to do is find out what, what your palate likes. A lot of folks are just, just dry whites or just dry reds, or they only like sweet wines. Once you find out what you personally enjoy, then you can kind of pair from there. So it's kind of a cart before the horse thing. Yeah. So it's barbecue season, it's and you're on the corner of Lincoln and Broadway sure. in Saratoga. Sure. And uh, we have a lot of barbecues going on. So sure. tell us, what is one of your favorite favorite wines for the barbecue season. Okay, barbecue during the barbecue. We're actually eating said, uh, you know, entree type meals. We're probably looking at a nice dry white or Pinot Gris while it lasts. I don't know how much longer that'll last. <laughs> um, and uh, a dry Riesling would probably be great. Our Chardonnay is doing yeah. very well. We also have a Gewürztraminer, you know, while you're having a meal. But once you're done, you know, chowing down and you want to just kind of hang out and, uh, you know, then you probably want to sneak a sweet white in there. We have a nice diamond or, or a tailspin, which is a nice red sweet blend. So. How does the wines influence the with the meals. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I said, it just it's, it's more of um, you know find out what you like. There's no there's no rule of thumb that says if I'm having fish, I can't have a red. So mm -hmm. you know, you just kind of have to find out what you enjoy a glass of. Maybe when you're not having a meal, and then kind of pair it. You know, you know, going in that going backwards almost. I so guess. So do you think that say. like the foods should complement the wines or? the wines should complement the food or are you just uh, think that that's a great question because it because it just matters i mean a lot of folks love wine so much that will dictate what they'll eat uh -huh. um they'll find a great pinot gris uh, pinot grigio and then they'll find something to pair and they'll go backwards kind of but you know primarily most people are, are a lot of folks that come in are foodies and really enjoy their mm -hmm. food and they'll say okay they'll come in real quick and say i'm having a dinner party tonight and this is what i'm having and then i can shoot them a quick suggestion from there too. yeah does um when when you are pairing because you guys are opening the restaurant soon too, mm -hmm. um, food, pairing food with the wines should the dominant which should be more dominant the the food or the wine? Yeah, yes, uh, that's a good question. Um, you, you know, we we'll throw some suggested some subjective uh, uh, pairings on there, and you know, and folks can go with that or they don't have to. It's just kind of our, our personal take between our chef and. In myself, and you know, if we have uh, you know diver scallops on there, then you know I keep bringing up the Pinot Gris, but you know the Pinot Gris <laughs> might be uh, something that would go well with that. Yeah, um, yeah kind of. What's a good temperature for wine? Good temperature for wine. Um, yeah, I mean, you you know, your reds are always kind of a room temperature type of deal, and mm -hmm. uh, and whites. Uh, I personally, you know, kind of the cooler the better for those. Um, in our tasting room, we're in the kind of mid forties. Uh, Fahrenheit, but I think typically usually high 40s, 50-ish somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you guys are, um, you've won some recent awards for your wines. Tell sure. us about those. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, again, starting in, you know, we only had four wines, four different types of wine going the first year that we opened up uh, the tasting room and we're actually producing wine. Again, the vineyard started in 73, but we only had uh, uh, Chancellor and Riesling planted at that point. Um, but, you know, over the, you know, over the time in the 80s, we started planting Pinot Noir and our Pinot Noir is, is done very well. And in fact, um, a great lead in there. Uh, the Pinot Noir was the highest rated Pinot Noir in North America and all of North America two years ago, our 2007 was. Mm -hmm. And that was um, um, as judge of the Pacific Rim competition which takes place in Southern California, which featured obviously some of the best Pinots, Pinot Noirs from Oregon and California. Um, we've also won the Governor's Cup for our dry Riesling uh, a few years ago. Uh, we've won the John Rose Award. So, you know, in, in a very small amount of time, our, our winemakers done a great job. Obviously, we have some very old vines uh, producing some great fruit, but without Sean Kime, our winemaker, I don't think any of that's possible. Yeah. What are some classifications that would say that your um, wine is award-winning? 
Is yeah. it by weight, taste, flavor? Yeah, and that's it's what the beauty part of, of competitions is that uh, they're always blind tastings, and, and you'll have folks that are winery owners, you'll have folks that are food critics, you'll have uh, journalists. I mean, uh, a panel at a competition is always very, very diverse uh, by design. And uh, so, I mean, you could have, you know, a, a winemaker from a particular winery, winery, you know, taking place and being a judge in one of these competitions. But being a, a blind tasting, he just he or she is just going to pick whatever they feel like is, is you know, the best tasting wine for, for that class. I mean, it can be anywhere from a varietal, which you're just tasting against other Pinot Noirs, or you can have a semi-sweet white blend. Our Snow Owl does very, very well in that competition. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, it just depends. I mean, usually it's just, you know, a, a particular varietal, just a, just a Pinot Noir from from actually all over the world what is your most popular wine Ooh, great question that <laughs> that kind of differs I keep saying great question but uh, <laughs> and it differs each year you know um, Finger Lakes are kind of known for whites maybe a little bit more than the reds um, but uh, you know we can do some great reds just not probably every year I think you know when we have you know the right season and this is turning out to be actually quite a, a good season uh, mm -hmm. um, this vintage will be a very good one because it's been so hot um, so, you know, uh, the Pinot Noir on the red side, the Meritage, which is a blend of uh, three Bordeaux's this year's, the 2010, is a Cab Sauve, uh, Cabernet Franc, and a Merlot, just a little bit of Merlot in there. Um, those are the best on, on probably the red side, the best sellers. And then on the white side, the Pinot Gris, um, all of our Rieslings are always pretty good sellers as well. Yeah. Um, any events coming up at uh, Thirsty Owl in Saratoga? Yeah, I feel like there's not very often where we don't have any events going on. Um, we actually, for uh, the dark days, the Tuesdays, for the track coming up, we're going to be doing um, with our neighbors, uh, the Saratoga Winery and Swedish Hill mm -hmm. down on Broadway there, uh, we're going to be doing um, uh, a trolley that kind of goes around to all three wineries on Tuesdays. So if anyone's trying to figure out what they're going to do on Tuesday when there's there are no Should horses to get a tasting to passport so, together. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. And also, um, we work also in um, within the Upper Hudson Valley Wine Trail, mm -hmm. uh, which just kicked off our first event, our wine and cheese event, um, was just this last month. Um, and that was... Uh, boy, we had over 60 people in, in our first uh, um, um, passport event, so that went very, very well. So, yeah, yeah. Very lots of events. We'll be hitting something probably once a month for the Upper Hudson Valley Wine Trail, and then, you know, at least, you know, our partnership with um, Sarat uh, Saratoga Winery and Swedish Hill, that'll certainly take place throughout uh, track season on Tuesdays, yeah. and so that'll be great. What's your website? Website is thirstyowlsaratoga.com. Thanks for bringing that up. I yeah, appreciate it. And tell it. us about the wines that you brought today. Okay, yeah, today I brought uh, I brought the 2010 uh, Pinot Noir, uh, which is great. Uh, we've switched it up recently. We've typically aged our, our Pinot in American and Hungarian oak. Can I see it? And the switch, yeah, the switch was over to just uh, um, all, all Hungarian oak, and that's... Uh, that's given us given us quite a quite a bit of boost in sales. Mm -hmm. We feel like the 2010 has been very great. But that also that year was was again like we were talking about earlier. It's probably a better season weather wise, uh, 2010 than maybe 2009 or eight. So. Uh -huh. yeah. And is this a riesling? Then? Yeah, this is our dry riesling. This is uh, this one. This uh, varietal is what won our uh, Governor's Cup a few years back. So in our, our dry Riesling and our Pinot Noir, um, it's interesting. In, in uh, All you need to really have is 80% of that actual grape in there to call it simply dry Riesling or, or Pinot Noir. A lot of folks will blend something else in there to give it a, a different taste. And our dry Riesling is 100% Riesling and our Pinot Noir is very rare now that anyone that uses just all, you know, 100% uh, Pinot Noir grapes, so. All right, we're going to need the glasses Oh, over absolutely. Here. we got to have a little taste. <laughs> absolutely. Let's go a little, a little yeah. dry Riesling. Yes. <laughs> you want to grab a glass sure, there? Sure, sure, sure. Have a little fun with the Maya's tasting room here on Scene TV. <laughs> so, well, you know, Josh, I want to thank you so much for being on the sure, show. Absolutely. I think it's been a lot of fun. Of and uh, best of luck to you here in Saratoga. Cheers. Thank you very much. Welcome back. You're watching Scene TV, and I'm Maya McNulty, your host. Schenectady Cable Entertainment News and Events. And next on our show, I'd like to welcome Mike Ryan from Ryan's Farmer's Market. Welcome, Mike. Thank you very much, Great Maya. to be How here, huh? Yeah. It's a I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. Yes. So you are the region's newest indoor farmer's market. Tell All us right. about your story. Well, we 
reintroduced uh, Ryan's Farmers Market uh, as Ryan's Farmers Market from WF Ryan Produce about four years ago. We actually been in business for, I think it's since 1910, and it's been a family business since that long, three generations. And we're located on 114 Railroad Avenue in Colony. We love what we're doing. We love mm-hmm. the customers. We buy local, and my all the stuff here is local. And all the viewers that are looking at this stuff, I'll tell you where this stuff comes from. Very short distance, so not a lot of travel, a lot of not a lot of emissions that are going on in the atmosphere, but the farmers come right to me very quickly. Corn was picked today, so is the green squash. I've got romaine that weighs about three pounds. I don't think you've ever bought a, a no. romaine <laughs> in a supermarket or big box store that weighs that much, but I support the local farmers and I support the people that come into my establishment. So it's, it's a nice place. Tell us about the experience that you can have when you go into Ryan's Farmer's Market. Well, at least you're greeted by people that are very in tune with what you need. Constant customers that come in. We pretty much know what you need as well. And that's nice, too, because if somebody comes in for cabbage or cauliflower or if they're coming in for fresh figs, you know those customers. Mm-hmm. So I know what they need, and if they're going around the store uh, and I see them, I try to get up. And you're, you have somebody like myself who's an owner that will actually get up and say, how's your day going? Uh, what are you cooking tonight? So we're more concerned about what you're gonna do and put on your family's table mm-hmm. for what is exactly what your family will eat. So a lot of key things, freshness too, is a very big thing. So we have fun with that. We support all these local people. Tell us about your experience with the climate and up here in upstate New York with working with local. Are you finding that the cost of your pr- produce expensive or is it reasonable to the market? Well, I have a good rapport with all my farmers because that came down from generations. And some of these farmers have been in business, you know, 40, 50, 60 years. They give me very good pricing. But the other thing that the farmers are experiencing is a lot of rain and a lot of heat. And, and some of the consumers don't know that, but I would be happy to explain that to them, you know, why we only had a two-week strawberry season. You know, we had the hot heat and then we had rain. Then you had mud in the fields. Nobody wanted to go out and pick. And the only thing that really was out there for the customers to do is go out and get their own strawberries to do jam. Mm-hmm. So at times, weather conditions here in the Northeast, the last few years have been really tough, especially on the apple farmers. They had the worst apple crop in 50 years uh, due to rain, uh, mainly hail, and, and I think it was some rain too, and some inclement, frosty weather because we had some really hot weather, I think, back in March of last year. Mm-hmm. And the buds fell off, doesn't produce the fruit. But I, I talk to all the farmers. I go to these farms, and I actually see the product before and as it's growing. And just in case the farmer forgets, you know, he's over picking corn. Hey, you know, the eggplant's ready. He goes, well, I don't know, Mike. No, I was just over there. I was driving by, and I'll look at the product. And, and I don't know of anybody else in the industry that cares that much about yeah. their business. Do you have high-quality control over your vegetables? I sure do. And I get the stuff in and out as quick as I can, and we have a good staff of people that I admit and make sure that the inventories are low each day so that way we can get from the farmers, um, at least local, as, as fast as we can. Corn should be picked every day at 6 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I get that an hour or two later. Nice crisp stuff, yeah. very sweet. So you're advertising, say, for the farmers. Who's advertising for Ryan's Market? Um, I guess you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is one of the ways being on scene TV. Uh, all of my customers that are very happy with what we're doing. And uh, I hear things like, Mike, I'm so happy that you're open mm-hmm. because we're open year-round. And there used to be a farmer's market or a family business on every corner years ago. Uh-huh. But now, at times, you see a big box store. So we're changing that. People are coming in. Oh, I'm so glad this is a farmer's market, a family-run business. So you want to see. It, it is. And you know what? Every time somebody says something like that, it, any care in the world that I have that's maybe negative, it goes mm-hmm. away. Because I'm talking to my customers. I enjoy uh-huh. um, their information and what they tell me. And they're happy we're, we're there. Yeah. Mike, tell me, what stands your fresh market apart from others? Well, Maya, there's quite a few things. And I would say when you walk in the door, somebody's there to greet you. We have very good pricing, and we do our best to beat the big box store prices. We have an establishment which has very nice fresh fruits and vegetables. We talk to our customers. Mm -hmm. We make them feel like, oh, yeah. There's nothing worse than walking into an establishment where you're not even recognized. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I've got people that are at my establishment that that are very happy to work with me. And I'm just, you know, a very short distance away from them if they mm-hmm. have to ask me a question. That way the customer has an answer real quick 
or Mike, can you get me something like, uh, I've got Haitian squash here. Uh -huh. And this Haitian squash yeah, is, is, is a very let's unique it. item. And it's, it tastes like the, it's like a yellow and green squash. Uh -huh. And some people go, hey, Mike, what are you doing with this? And some people have asked for it, too, from um, other what ethnicities. What do you do with it? What do you cook with it? Uh, well, actually, what you could do is use this in stir fry. Okay. And it's similar to yellow and green squash. And you can kind of slice it up and put it on stir fry. And it, it works out um, where people can have a lot of other dishes along with it, too. You can um, go on the Internet. And as you know, the Internet's got a lot of uh, goodies mm -hmm. available. Um, these are just some unusual items that, like, hey, Mike, I'll try it. Yeah, you know, and I definitely would try that. I love stir fry. It, it's very unique, yeah. you know, and everybody's really, um, you know, they know what cabbage is. They know what the, the yeah. cucumbers are and the pickling cukes. I have smaller ones there. Uh -huh. Garlic scapes. We use garlic scapes in place of garlic. It's a little mm -hmm. bit of a lighter garlic. And then, of course, if you want to put that in, you know, salads or stir fry, you can put that in there, too. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the, the jars of sauces oh, yeah. and salsas that you have. Yes. Um, this is Grandpa Pete's. Tell us about the Sunday sauce. Uh, Grandpa Pete's has one of the best sauces that I know of in this area. I support him. He's a local mm -hmm. gentleman. He goes to a lot of the farmer's markets. He's got four or five varieties at our establishment. One of the ones I like the most is the vodka sauce. Mm -hmm. He also has a marinade and a garlic one, too. But at times we have sampling going on at our store. Yeah. Not only with that, but... You know, we'll treat you to lemonade, and uh, if you catch us on some days we're doing chocolate-covered strawberries, you get one of those free. Oh, So we're doing delish. sampling samplings constant. <laughs> Tell so. us about the J&B Salsa, because they're oh, a new yeah. up-and-rising company. Yes. It's exciting. They've got a couple different bruschetta, the apple uh, corn salsa. Yes. Uh, they've done a fine job at our establishment. They've done quite a few uh, samplings at our spot. They do a lot of the farmer's markets. He just started in business with his son uh -huh. uh, just a short time ago. Yep, Jason. Oh, Jason Wright yeah. and, and Barry, the, the father, have done a fine job, and they're coming out with a new one, right? Yeah. I think it's a hot sauce. The habanero. Yes. yes I've heard about that. I can't wait for that. And yeah. you know what? You can sample that at our store. <laughs> okay, I will. So you can come on with that. And, uh, <laughs> I will. Congratulations. Well, we'll to just those get guys. J&B to come on the show, too. We'll have yeah. lots of samplings. But that's, that's right. also gluten-free, so that's a really good ah, um, yes, yeah. product as well. Right. Tell us about some of the maple syrups that you have. Oh, we have those from uh, Maple Land Farms. Mm -hmm. We get those from uh, Western New York, and those people are local, too. Um, we keep the costs down. These people know we have a farmer's market, and we know economic times for some things like that, but that might be a little bit more pricey, right. are very reasonably priced at Ryan's. Uh -huh. And then you have honey as well? Sure. Um, Finster Honey has been a very popular brand, and we also have raw honey too, and that has a lot more antioxidants in it. farmer tells me that he, when they cook these and take them off the combs, uh, he cooks that raw honey at, at 90 degrees. Okay. And it has more vitamin nutrition in than the honey that it's at 150. But both are very, very good. And as you know, it helps you with allergies, right? Well, I didn't know. No? But okay. Hey, teach me something. <laughs> okay. Well, the allergy uh, factor behind that is if you eat the honey, and say you put it on toast or you put it in your tea, mm -hmm. that helps you build up an immunity because it has the pollen in it. Mm -hmm. So when you get your allergies, your hay fever and things like that, and you start getting runny noses, before that happens, I want you to get some honey at Ryan's Farmer's Market. And Finster is one of the best brands I have. Yeah. Tell us about the cooking show, Cook Like a Pro. Um, the cooking show that we have, we have different guest chefs come. Mm -hmm. I had Laura Laz at the last one, and she'll come and cook four or five dishes at our establishment. And something that she does also that I didn't find out until she told me before the show, she, she does hula dancing. <laughs> and she has also students. And after the show, she did a very, very nice performance out in our parking lot for 45 plus people oh and in costume she all made herself uh -huh. you would think you were in Broadway watching what she did and she did something very uh, exquisite not only with the cooking but with the dancing too That's so very fun. class act yeah uh, chef Shaw Rabati comes also uh, he's formerly from BFS uh, Joan Dubinsky from Yono's has done a yeah. cooking show at her establishment we try to have those every two or three weeks uh, very well priced we keep things economically low. Yeah. And, and you use all locally grown products. For as that much as I possibly can. Oh, mm -hmm. it's it's so much fun. And some of the chefs I think we'll have a show too sometimes you just grab off the shelf and cook, you know, uh -huh. like a mystery basket kind of thing. Oh, we'll no. do that. Maybe you can help us out. Okay, I want to learn. I know. So tell us about, um, you have luau parties at your um, farmer's market? Well, the luau party went in a good theme with Laura Laz, and she tells me that we're going to have another one in September. Mm 
-hmm. We're going to name it something else, but she's got a surprise that's going to come up for a fall theme. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I need her creativity to come up with not only uh, the cooking you know, that we're going to have at our establishment at Ryan's Farmer's Market, but also um, maybe some more uh, hula dancers. And maybe we can get you in a grass skirt. <laughs> maybe Sounds that'll like fun. happen. <laughs> Coming up, car shows uh, we have every Saturday from 4 to 8 o'clock. Now, uh, weather permitting. So if there's a mm -hmm. few dark clouds in the sky, I've noticed that we have smaller crowds. If it's raining out, definitely not going to have them. Yeah. But I'm always there for the car guys uh, through the end of the season. And that's every Saturday from 4 o'clock to 8 yeah. o'clock at do night. Do you do bikes as well, like Harleys? And... Everybody's invited. Okay. You know, and even at the last one we did, uh, I bought a couple pizzas. We passed around chocolate-covered strawberries. Nice. Made people feel at home, not only for parking their cars and showing, but, you know, they went inside and, and it showed some people that aren't customers of mine yet. Um, I sh those people are now new. Yeah. So it's I got new customers out of it as well. a great way to get people to come to your establishment and show them your beautiful market. Mm -hmm. nice. So you've done a lot really to educate the consumers. You've got a great staff. You're supporting locally owned vegetable yes. farmers. Your car shows, luau's. Uh, what's next for Ryan's Farmer's Market? Well, the sky's the limit. And we do have some barbecue outside. We've been doing that. Uh, there's been a chef friend of mine, Paul Rother, doing that for the last four or five years. And uh, we are hopefully intending to put up a tent with uh, 10 picnic tables on our established property. We do have close to a couple acres right there. We also have uh, a nice grassy area. We have a lake in the back. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to come in and cater, you know, have us cater parties, we can do that as like well. Like a corporate event? Sure. And it's a nice atmosphere, too, because you would think you're in the country. Mm -hmm. And that's what the car show guys tell me. It's like, I never knew this was back here. Uh -huh. And Mike, hey, there's a lake over there. Well, I knew that. <laughs> um, and some of the guys that are maybe older, fit, older than 50 or 60, they used to swim in the back uh, in that lake area at Six Mile Waterworks. It's called Little Six Mile. Uh -huh. It's directly behind my store. It's great fishing, too. Yeah. So very nice. That's an, an area that I'm going to go into. Uh, there's some other things, too. Uh, maybe we'll be on some more shows uh, educating people about uh, different products that are coming up. Uh, you know, like the spinach. People think that mm -hmm. that as uh, beet greens, but it's a very unusual yeah, strain. Yeah, well, the bread and the beets, it really kind of throws it off. So. Yes, and, you know, there's just some things, too, that I want to educate my Do customers Do you have some classes about. that educate um, consumers on vegetables? Well, actually, if you come in one-on-one, -on -one, we'll talk to the customers, and we'll say, hey, try the spinach in this dish mm -hmm. or that. You know, it might be a stir-fry thing. might be in salads. Mm -hmm. And, and do you offer recipes be. so that they can maybe mix and match these vegetables with a healthy meal? Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, Chef Joan Dubinsky has mm -hmm. uh, some online from her show. Um, Chef Shaw rabadi has got some, and so does Laura Laz. So we've got them right on our website. And we'll post some more, too. It's, yeah. a, it's a very good idea to have yeah. them established right near the product. Probably Facebook as well. That's probably yeah. a good idea because people are so viral these days. <laughs> yeah, that they are. So tell us, is the Koken show on Channel uh, 18 on Time Warner, is that the show that it's on? Yes. Matter of fact, uh, starting last week, I have a six-week slot. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be on at 6 o'clock every Wednesday for the next five weeks. And, um, of course, this show is going to be on, too. I mean, I can't, I'm so excited, you know, <laughs> that you have me on, and yeah, I, I can't wait pleasure. to see it. The rest of my family and my customers will also see that as well because we have a nice established uh, amount of people that we send emails out to. So we're approaching probably 1,700. Uh, so we'll tell people, you know, take mm -hmm. a look at the show, see yeah, what absolutely. you think. absolutely. We appreciate it. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. Well, I want to thank so you fun. so much, Mike, for being on the show today. Oh, this is great. Learned a lot about uh, Ryan's yeah. Farmer's Market. Mm -hmm. And um, I think happy cooking, right? And yes, I think <laughs> together we will. Yeah, There's no absolutely. question about it. And uh, we've got thank some very you. good established people that will help you cook, right?